y'all and welcome to my shop. Uh, today we're going to turn a, a baby's rattle um, like this. It, it's cute. This one's made out of uh, red oak. Um, this contrasts with one I did earlier uh, with captive rings. If you're interested in this one, there'll be a, a link that you can uh, link to this one. But this one is, is also a nice one. It's got some uh, popcorn in it. Um, I got the idea for this out of Richard Raffin's book, uh, Turning Toys. Now I'm going to show you initially how he uh, had you take take the wood and split it with a um, uh, a chisel and, and a mallet. Um, I didn't have good luck with that result, so I found it easier to just cut it in half with a bandsaw. And as it turns out, uh, I got a, a seam. I, I, I literally cannot find the seam on, on this, so I think... Uh, cutting it in half with a bandsaw is a little easier than splitting it, but uh, you know, there's more than one way to do it, so try it and, and see which way it works for you. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is cut out our piece of wood, uh, approximately one and three quarters by, uh, say, four and a half. Uh, this is uh, some red oak. It's a little bit green. I cut this about three months ago, uh, but I think it'll probably do just fine. So. Let me go ahead and put on some hearing protection, turn on dust collector, and cut this up real quick. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to split it in half with a wide chisel. Thusly. And because of the grain, that didn't work well, so let's go back to the drawing board. Okay, we're going to try this again. I've trimmed the wood a little differently. This time we're going to cut along the radius. Uh, parallel with the medullary uh, rays and see if we can't get a better split. So here goes. Looks like we got a little bit of crack. Get all the way out here. Okay, now we don't want to touch these surfaces. We're going to uh, I'm going to show you how we're going to chuck this up, but we're not going to sand this. We're going to be able to put it right back together so when we clamp it and glue it, you won't even be able to see the uh, glue line. Okay, we're going to hollow this out on each side. Uh, just like it was a little bowl, and to do that, we're going to mount this uh, in a chuck with a couple of jaws removed. And I put a little scrap that I cut off of here to kind of keep this from going down too far. And I think I'm going to get away from that knot. So we're simply going to put it there and then tighten up. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, hollow it out with a small bowl gouge and being aware of where that wing is going to come around. Okay, here we go. I'm going to turn this thing oh, maybe at about 1100. And we're just going to ease into the center here. Just like a little bowl. I think the challenge on this is to make sure that we get the walls thin enough that it makes some sound, but not so thin that it's going to, to break. And we can go just a little bit further, a little deeper, certainly. Maybe a little bit wider, but not much. Okay. 
and I think that's that's thin enough on the side. Now what we want to do, I want to get a feel for trying to get this thing. I should have probably marked center on this so I could measure. So let's go ahead and, and, and measure what we think the center of this is going to be so I can set the depth. I uh, don't know that I have a really good way of doing that. I think I'm just going to evaluate the tip of this is just about one blade width. And that'll do it. So now, now it's time to mount the other piece. Okay, after I put this piece in the chuck, I uh, turned it by hand with a pencil to see if I got it on on center. And you can see it's off center a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and shift that just a bit. It pays to uh, mark these things and get them centered to make sure that this part's going to match with this part. just a bit deeper. Just to touch up with a round nose scraper, get rid of any spots. And I think it's ready for glue up. Okay, now it's time to put something in there to make it rattle. Uh, Richard Raffin in his uh, book chapter on these used a bolt like this, and I think frankly it'll prob that's probably the loudest, but uh, I felt a little uncomfortable with that in case some somehow the, the little rug rat chews through them, so I used, chose to use uh, a little bit of uh, popcorn, but other, you know, most anything you come up with, dried beans will work just fine, so now we're going to use a little bit of uh, uh, glue. I, I tend, whoa, we're not going to use that much glue, but hey, this glue is getting old, so it's not like I'm wasting it. Uh, and we're going to just rub it in real good on both sides. This is the original, original tight bond. We don't want to get it too close to the edge because we don't want to squeeze out to interfere interfere with the uh, popcorn sticking sticking to it. I think here's where we go into fast forward. You don't see me need to watch me belabor putting glue on here. So let's go.
Okay, so we're going to take our our blank, the mark between mark centers, bring it up between centers, turn it round, put a tenon on one end so we can mount it in a scroll chuck. Tailstock support just for safety. And we're going to bring this, uh, bring this down just a little bit here. Keep rounding it off. Big bead, and there's the the bevel. So that's the angle, about 45 degrees. We need to finish this cut in. Lift, rotate, push. All one time. Whoop! Lost double support. this waist detail gouge which I can reach a little deeper in there.
Now, since I'm going to do a lot of bulk wood removal, I'm going to use just a small bowl gas. Sanded up. Now it's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, uh, finish on it. Sometimes the best finish is no finish, and there's no there's no finish that's going to withstand the uh, chewing of a baby. So if you put anything on, chances are that it's going to have to be renewed. So with a little vegetable oil or mineral oil, I'm going to use some uh, Mahoney's finish. It's an oil wax. It's got uh, uh, walnut oil and some beeswax and maybe a t maybe a touch of uh, canuba, uh, but it's going to look real nice to begin with. They're just going to have to come back and when they wash it off, they're going to have to put a little something back on it to renew that shine. And I'm going to get a little piece of paper. Just Shine it in there. Alright, I'm going to take, go ahead and part this off a little bit. Turn the bottom to it, bring it down a little bit. I think on the next one, instead of four and a half inches, I think I'd use four, uh, five inches of wood so I could, uh, wouldn't have to cut it quite this close. a little easier to round this off. Alright, so here's the easiest way to sand this. Just hand rub a little bit of uh, that uh, wax finish on it, uh, and we're done. Yeah.